I have so much to tell you. Do not leave. <laughs> Stay until the end of this video. My intro. Hi everyone, it's me, Darlene. I am in uh, the parking lot of a hospital in Sherwood, Arkansas. Blue Eyes is in the hospital. I'm in his van. I just left him and I'm going to the apartment to get some stuff done. I'll be coming back, but I wanted to uh, record and fill you in on what's going on. Last night I recorded and told you guys that he had a job, road construction, uh, holding the slow and stop sign. That's not why he's in the hospital, um, but just to give you an idea of what was going on, he calls me and tells me that he's coming home. He's very sick. He feels like he's having a heart attack. And I'm like, uh, no, we're calling 911. He said, I'll call them. And he says, but I don't know how to explain where I am. And I'm like, just at least call them. Maybe they can tell by your phone, where your phone is or something. And he's like, I'll just, I'll, I'll call somebody. And then I, I hear him. He's like, oh my God. He's like, I'm on my knees. And he's like moaning, like in pain. And I'm fucking going nuts. I'm like, do not hang up. I want to know where you are. And he's like, I don't know where I am, baby. He's like, I don't, I don't know the roads here and it's pitch black. And I'm all alone. And I was like, oh my God. And he's like, I'll let you know. And he fucking hangs up on me. I call right back. I can't get him. So I'm like, okay, maybe he's talking to 911 now. I call 911 to find out if there's any way that they can trace where his phone is um, to give us an idea. Because if I don't hear back from him, he could just be dead in the woods somewhere on a back road. I don't know. My mind was going nuts. And I was like, why, why, why did he call me and then hang up so um i talked to 911 and they said that you know they couldn't find him by the phone number um and i gave them as much information as i had i didn't know anything really i just remembered that it was on a, a road called asher because there had been an accident and he asked me to like look for an alternate route for him when he was trying to get there so i just remembered that it was on asher road street something i i, I didn't know that's all the information i had uh what the 911 man said was that he will try calling him and try to get a better description as to where he could possibly be and i don't know my my mind was my mind was spinning and i was just i was in shock as to what blue eyes was telling me the 911 man and i ended up hanging up and i kept trying to call blue eyes and i couldn't get through to him and i was just in a sheer panic and i got dressed i didn't know where i was going i just thought i'm going to at least go to Little Rock on this Asher Road and see, and or uh, no matter what, if somebody helped him, I would assume he would have been in a Little Rock hospital. I had no clue, and it was very late. I was exhausted, and I didn't care. I said, I'm getting into the, the um, oh my God, and that's the other thing. He had the van, so I was going to have to take his broken down Toyota, which he says runs good, but it's so hard. I can't even open the door from the driver's side. I have to go into the to the passenger side and like the panel is missing and I have to find this one particular thing that's going to open the door so I can go around and get in and the, the gas gauge doesn't work and he says but only if there's a little orange light or a yellow light that pops up that's when you have to start worrying because that's the thing that's going to tell you that you have like 30 miles left and I was just like oh my god um but anyway while I was going through all that um, trauma <laughs> he calls and he tells me I'm in the van and I'm coming home and you're going to call an ambulance for me when I get there and I'm like I, you can't you can't be driving I mean I just couldn't believe the things he was saying He's like, I'm driving home, and that's the last thing I hear, and I had to wait about 35 minutes hoping that he made it home, and at, he said it'll be about 35 minutes according to the GPS, so on minute 35, I go outside, and I'm like, please, please just start to, to show up, and 
He was pulling in as I went outside, got him in the house, called an ambulance, and uh, they took him to the hospital. So his complaints were uh, a lot of stomach pain, headache, he was vomiting, a lot of chest pain, a lot of pressure, um, all kinds of things. And uh, they whisked him away to a hospital and I got in the van now that I was much more comfortable driving and I went to the hospital and I was with him until 3 a.m. They think it's his heart, uh, not his diabetes. He has had... Uh, three episodes with his heart three different times he had to have a stent put in so he has three stents and um, he did not have a heart attack according to the EKG and the things like that but they said they still think it's heart related and so of course they kept him last night and now today they did an ultrasound and th there's a heart specialist involved I didn't get to find out any results from that at this point uh, and tomorrow they're doing a stress test and different things and of course they're talking to him about his diabetes and but everything was good on that um, eh, but I'm still extremely worried he's very weak he has headaches his toes are numb he um, he's in a lot of pain still in his uh, stomach and we talked to a nurse about should he have a colonoscopy and stuff and she said well they won't be ordering that because that wasn't his complaint his complaint was his chest but he also complained about his stomach pain and he's still complaining about that I didn't get to see a doctor today I don't think I will tonight but I will be making calls and making sure we get all the things done that we need to get done my concern is that he's still very, very weak. So, but here's another little thing. Um, his nurse last night, and like I said, I left at 3 a.m. And she was going to be his nurse again tonight, and I'm hoping she's not. Uh, she was very stern, and she would ask him questions, and then she didn't seem to like the way he was answering because he was saying things like, no, I, I'm good with that, and I know how to... And she's asking a lot of questions about diabetes and all the things that he does, the way he does it, and how he wants it, and when he wants to test, and all these things. And he, all he kept saying was... Jesus, I thought somebody was right here. All he kept saying were things like, you know, I, I'm not you know going to explain to you uh, you know this and that he he didn't want her to keep asking the same questions once he would say to her i test when i test it, you know he didn't want her to argue with him about that but she would turn around and say well you're going to have to stop doing it that way you're going to have to start doing things all the right way and i knew that was going to agitate him and i told her i said he's just really He's just really nervous right now and he's agitated and I spoke to her. I mean, I can be a fucking bitch when somebody uh, is irritating me, but if it's with, between two other people, I can be very calm and I'm very good at just trying to calm things down a little bit. And I was explaining to her and then I was asking her some questions just so she would stop talking to him. You know, just like, I want to learn these things. And so she would answer my questions, but I didn't realize that was aggravating him too because he feels like I was uh, not believing him. At the end, he's like, you asked her all kinds of questions and I've already explained those things to you. And I said, baby, I was just trying to keep her from talking to you. <laughs> she said a couple times, oh, what was it she said? Um she said some things like you don't even know what you're talking about you don't know what keto the the long version of that word is and that was pissing him off and at one point he raised his voice to her and said i've been dealing with this since i'm age five i know what it is then then she turned around and she had her hands like on her hips and she's like I've been doing this for 20 years and you're not going to tell me what I know or don't know. And I was like, please, I'm like, let's all just calm down. And he said to her, um, I don't want to argue about this. And he said it in a nice, calm voice. And I said, yes, let's just, let's all just change the subject. And she's like, well, I have to know these things. And I said, I know. I said, but he's just really... He's just scared right now, and he's agitated, and, you know, I said, I can help you with 
certain things, and, and so we continued. And when I left at 3, I actually went up to her and thanked her and said, you know, thank you for being understanding. I said, you know, he, he's going to be fine. I said, and, you know, he just was really upset and nervous and all that stuff. And I left. And uh, when Blue Eyes called me this morning, he said that she filed a complaint on not just him, but me too. <laughs> Somebody came in to talk to him about that and said, we've had a complaint and I'd like to know your side of the story. And I said, how come they don't want my side of the story too? So I'm going to find out who that person was who came in, but um, uh, Blue Eyes told them everything. And I, I just, it blows my fucking mind that any nurse would um, let something get heated. He's in the fucking hospital. He's sick. It's almost 3 a.m. You know, it was probably like 2 to 3 that we spent that time with her. There's no way he should have been encouraged to get more upset than he already was. And I'm telling you, I was there the whole time. I never said anything negative to her. I never raised my voice to her. You might find that hard to believe, but like I said, I was in damage control mode and he only raised his voice to her once. And then he even said right after, I don't want to argue about this. And he said that in a very nice voice. So supposedly, and it was a man, supposedly he listened to Blue Eyes and he even told him, this is what Blue Eyes is telling me, that he would look into it and Blue Eyes was able to file a complaint against this nurse. And he was told she would not be his nurse again. And I hope that's true because I can't even imagine them being together after each one of them filed a complaint. I <laughs> and I do want to talk to um, whoever's in charge of complaints. And I will. I'm just so busy right now um, doing stuff. Now I have to go home. I'm going to eat, take care of Rocket, do all that stuff. And then I'll be coming back to spend the entire evening with Blue Eyes. All right. So uh, I had them all set up. Uh, they didn't have anything on his table, no water, no tissues, no nothing. And I asked for a box of tissues. I asked for um, something for him to drink because they told me not to bring him anything. It has to all go by them. And it's like, well, he is thirsty. Can you give him something to drink? You know? <laughs> it's like, and, uh, and he's very weak and he needed to go to the bathroom. And I buzzed the nurse and I said, he's going to be, uh, he's going to need help to go to the bathroom. And of course he's hooked up to all kinds of things. So she comes in and she unhooks him and she starts to go. She goes, uh, let me know when you're back in bed so uh, I can hook you up. And I said, you're not going to help him to the bathroom. She says, oh no, he's, he's good. So um, he said, no, I'm, I'm good, I'm good. And so I knew when he told me he was good, he's not going to want me to help him. He's very, very stubborn in that way. Um, so I watched him get up, and it was just a couple of steps. And so he made it to the bathroom, and he made it back. But I just thought that that was bizarre, that uh, she didn't even ask if he needed help. I, I don't know. And I'm mad that I didn't get up, because he could have fallen. I mean, I could have walked him to the bathroom and let him do his thing and then help him back. I don't know, but it shouldn't be my job. I'm like, if the tech or whoever she is, she's not a nurse. She's the person who helps people go to the bathroom. And it's like, and unhooked him. I, I, I just don't even know what to think right now. I feel like I've done everything wrong. And, you know, I don't know. So... He came back to bed, and then it took a long time for them to come to hook him back up. I didn't care about that. I'm like, if they're not concerned with him being hooked up to all these things, the monitors and these things, then I'm not going to worry about it. Um, but I just, I thought that was bizarre. And then when she came back, she's the one that I said, could he have something to drink? Can he have tissues? <sighs> I told him, I said, I, I'm going to have to leave now because... I'm really hungry and I want to be able to come back and I want to go home and be with Rocket for a little bit, take him out, do some stuff, upload this and um, 
you know, I'm comfortable with leaving him there. I told him, take a nap. And he said, I think I will take a nap. So I'm going to come back in maybe two hours and spend the whole rest of the night with him. So as I leave his room, I walk down one hall and then I turn and I start walking. And the next thing I know, I'm crashing onto the floor. My rubber sole and those floors are like so shiny. Just, I, I, I skidded. I didn't pick my foot up enough and it skidded, but it didn't slide because of my rubber sole and the floor. And I was holding two bags, my phone, the keys. I had glasses on the top of my head and all of that shit went flying. I, I mean, it's like as much as I was, uh, it was so quick. I, it's like I could see everything. I could see my phone and my glasses, <laughs> the keys and all I can think of when I fall is I don't, I don't want to hit face first on the floor. But I I landed on, thank goodness, it's my left knee. Now, maybe I'll have another bad knee. But it's not so much the knee, it's like the side of my leg. I was able to turn a little bit. And um, my, good, uh, my knee that hurts a little bit all the time, uh, when I land on that knee, then I'm going to be in pain for like two weeks. But because it's already a little bit bad, but I think I'm going to be good. All right. So I'm on the floor and I, I let out a moan and I had in no time, I had seven people around me. I was so embarrassed, so embarrassed. People are going to get my phone, my glasses, my keys. I'm putting that stuff in my purse. And at first I was like, oh my God, I'm really hurt. But after I was able to sit on my ass, I thought, okay, my knee, it bends and I'm going to be good. And, but of course they, they, you know, tell me, do you want to go to the ER? I'm like, I have no insurance. If you guys are paying for that and you know, well, no, you know, we're not, you know, it's like, okay. Um, so I said, no, I'm not. And I sat for a little bit and they were going to get me a wheelchair. And I said, all I really need help with at this point is I need help to get up because I did not want to get onto my knees. I slid on my ass until I could reach the railing on the wall, but I did not want to get on my two knees and lift myself. So they eventually, after saying that I was refusing help and um, uh, not help, but care or whatever, uh, two people took me by the arms and, and helped me to get up. And they said, do you want a wheelchair? And I said, no, I, I will be able to walk. And I'm not kidding. I take like three steps just to see if I'm okay. And my shoe gets caught again and I almost fell, but I was able to save myself. I was so scared. And even at that point, they're like, we really think we should wheel you out. And I was like, I was being stubborn now. I just didn't want to be in a wheelchair. But I told them, I said, no, I understand now what, what it is with these shoes. So I was walking like, like lifting my foot and lifting my foot and putting it down. I just wanted to get out of there. I was so embarrassed so embarrassed and I, I made it to the van I will not be wearing the shoes I'm wearing when I go back but yeah I fell completely made a fool of myself nobody saw me falling but they certainly heard me oh my god so that's where I'm at and uh, of course I will keep you guys updated I am worried because uh, blue eyes is still very very weak and if he gets up to go to the bathroom Again, while I'm there, I don't care what he says. I'm fucking helping him because I know what it's like to fall down. <laughs> I don't want him falling. I'm happy he's in the hospital, at least at this point. But, all right, I, I need to get going. And uh, I will keep you up to date with what's going on. I'm expecting only good news that uh, whatever he has can be fixed. Right? Right. Thank you guys so much. Please subscribe and I'll be back with more soon. Bye.